it's Lauren Yates from Rave It Up here and today I'm chatting over Skype with Australian award-winning actor, singer and director Tyron Park. Hi Tyron, how are you going today? Great, nice to talk to you. Yeah, thank you for coming on Rave It Up, I really appreciate it because you've got such a busy schedule. Yeah, it's kind of cr- it's kind of crazy at the moment but um, look, any chance to to have a chat and talk about the things that, that I'm doing is, is awesome. Yeah, and the stuff that you're passionate about. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's uh, thanks to our dear friend Stephen May that you're on the show today. Uh, he's been on the show a couple of times, and the last time he was on the show, he actually mentioned you and was talking about you, and he said, oh, he'd be a great guest for the show. <laughs> uh, he should be my agent, that man. I love him. <laughs> he's, good, he's good at promoting you, obviously. <laughs> yeah, and, and likewise. I mean, you know, like you work with people like Stephen, and I have a, a list of a list of people that whenever I get a show to direct and stuff like that, I think, you know, where can I put Stephen May? You know, it's actually a, a kind of small list of people who are just your people, you know. There are many, many talented people out there, but the people who just really get your kind of aesthetic as well, and Stephen's definitely one of those people. Yeah, the one person that's always got your back as well. That, that's yeah. definitely who Stephen is. Exactly. And he's, he's um, you know, he's so damn nice. And he's not unattractive as well, which kind of helps in musicals and things. So, you know. Exactly. (laughs) Now, since this is your first time on the show, we'd love to get to know you a little bit better. And I think we should start from the beginning because that only makes sense to you, right? (laughs) Oh, sure. You graduated from Whopper in 1999. So is that always what you wanted to do with your life? Was there any other careers that you wanted to pursue? I did always want to be in the theatre, but that was an accident more than anything. I mean, I I just started theatre very young in Newcastle, and it was really because I was so desperately shy. I mean, I was so shy as a kid that my mum kind of went, what are we going to do with this? And so sent me to theatre. And um, it was just a bit of fun, really. It was sort of fun. And then over time, that, you know, that became more than fun, became a passion. And... um, there were other things and on occasions where, you know, the industry has hurt because, as we know, it's an industry that we kind of love and sometimes love to hate. And there was one particular very difficult moment where I was going to direct um, Next to Normal at the Capitol Theatre and it got cancelled about four weeks before we were about to start. And I had a little moment then where I was like, I am I did well at school, I can do other things. So what other things do I want to do? And um I went and trained to be a zookeeper. Wow, <laughs> that's different. <laughs> yeah, so in my days, I would I would be literally, I'd be at Taronga Zoo, um, you know, working with animals, and then at night I'd be at the theatre. And I studied to be a counsellor for a while, and I think all those things somehow led me to directing. Cause, you know, I heard all the cast in, and then I counselled them through what we need to do, and then we do the show. So I, I'm kind of a, I've always loved theatre. I love theatre. It's my absolute passion. Like, it is... A, a, I'm a theatre junkie, um, but I think to be a theatre junkie, you have to have a big interest in life, full stop. So I, I, if the theatre just stopped tomorrow, there are other things. Then I'm not a junkie for them, but there are other things that would interest me, definitely. Wow, that's, that's a lot of things you've already done. <laughs> and I never would have guessed you as a shy person. Yeah, well, theatre worked, didn't it? Yes. Yeah. Well, I was exactly the same when I was a kid too. Really? Well, you know, to, to be honest, Lauren, like, to be honest, I still am. I still am that shy kid. I just know how to not be that because I, went for, I had a life in the theatre, you know, so it did what it was supposed to do. Yeah, that little kid is still, like, way deep down <laughs> in yeah. there somewhere. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, that's awesome. And were you always, like, singing and dancing around the house when you were a kid? Is that, you know, something, oh. a reason why your parents were like, we got to put him in theatre? <laughs> No, look, I, I liked singing and my, my family is very artistic, but that happened sort of late. I mean, the real story, the big story really is, um, and I say the big story because I, I once wrote a show about it, but um, I get very interested in, in what happens to people and why they choose the theatre. And, um, and generally there's always an incident around sort of 9 to 12 that happens in people's lives and they it's either something that happens in their lives or... Um, they see something that is particularly magical in the theatre and get entranced. And so I have spent many a time in like regional tours chatting to my actors going, so tell me your story. Um, 
but my story really was that my mother passed away uh, and so and it was very very kind of sudden and an asthma attack overnight and back in the 80s when that happened we just didn't know how best to cope with that you know like they're just like my dad says now there wasn't counseling or and he thought the best thing to do was just sort of put away all of her photos and you know which of course would never happen now but you know what did we know and um and so i ended up theater was where everything came out for me theater is where i explored a whole bunch of stuff around that my older brother became a photographer and it's definitely a very famous photographer and it's definitely in his work and my younger brother became a visual artist and so for me it sort of had a darker undertone even though people always go musical theater it's so light and bright and happy but um there was a sort of a, a you know a, a therapeutic reason for me doing it i guess wow that's so deep i think that's the deepest answer for anybody in musical theater that i've gotten <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't, I don't, I, my ignorance is I don't know the show. And so suddenly you might be going, who have we got on here today? This is supposed to be a live chat. <laughs> it's all about how you got started and um, it's interesting to hear it. Yeah. Well, you know, it is, I do find it really interesting why people choose the arts. Like what is it? And there's usually a, a, a story or, a, and, and the other one for me was I went and saw a particular production um, called The Children's Hour, which I don't know if you know it. It's a play by Lillian Hellman and it's, um, it's a play, it was on at the Newcastle Young People's Theatre and it's called The Children's Hour. And so my dad took me thinking it was like a pantomime and it's a very adult play about two, two women who get accused of being lesbians who run a boarding house and at the end one of them kills themselves. And I remember my father just thinking, what have I brought my son to? And I remember being very confronted by this pantomime um, but at the end the very end scene I, like I will never forget it um, the woman went off stage and there was a gunshot and and the set with these sort of windows of this boarding house and it started to rain and of course there were just people with hoses back then or whatever they did I, I was so enchanted by the idea that they had made it rain on stage that I was hooked that was it then I was done Wow, this is so interesting. <laughs> and then you obviously went to Whopper and kind of, I guess, continued your studies and learnt more about it. Did you find it hard finding work after you graduated from Whopper? Um, I found it, it was different then. It was so different. I mean, now I train actors and I just can't, like, I can't say how different it was. Um, you know, it was just, it was such a different world. It was like, I see people now with the amount of pressure on how quickly they think they have to get work. And I remember I lived in a house full of Whopper grads when I graduated and it took me nine months to, oh, it took me about three months to get an ad, a commercial, but it took me nine months to get a musical, which these days is considered a long time. Whereas there, I just knew, I was like, <coughs> you know, it, it will ha it'll happen. And during that time, it was great because it was just like life. It was like living until that moment. And, um, and I'm lucky. You know, I've just always been lucky and and there's something around, like, I think, you know, you joked before, before we went on air, you said, how long have you got for this interview? And I said, oh, I've got to be somewhere at two, which is like three hours away. Um, but, you know, I've got a story about everything. That's, that's the thing. But look, you know, I was lucky. And the first thing that I did was The Sound of Music and even the way of getting into that was so profound and bizarre and should never have happened, but it happened and was completely joyous and truly the best start to a music theatre career. I, I loved it so much. Mm. Um, and I was so lucky to have such incredible people to teach me. And because I was, I mean, the, the, the cast was full of nuns and, and kids, you know, and because I was the only one, I was sort of 20 or something, and I was 23 or something. Um, and uh, because I was the only one in that world, it was my first show, they took a lot of care around me and that was just, it was, it was a blessed kind of world, really. That's incredible. Like just out of Whopper and you're doing the sound of music. <laughs> yeah, it was incredible. And it was incredible because to be honest, I did a terrible audition and they should never have taken me. And in fact, they, they didn't take me. I did an audition and, and I remember singing and thinking I'm right for this. And I didn't get it. I was terrible. I shouldn't have got it. And then I felt so angry with myself that I wrote to them and asked if they would see me again. And they agreed to. And I showed up and guess what? I was terrible. I just didn't have my knack around auditioning. Um, and then I won this silly competition, this kind of equivalent to an Estedford, if you like, at the casino. 
and I was singing for them at a, at a kind of concert. And John Frost, who's like the producer of Sound of Music and the biggest producer in Australia, he was, I saw him backstage as I was rehearsing and I just thought, I'm going to sing this so well. And I walked off stage and he said, how come you never sung like that for me in an audition? And I was like, oh, I get nervous. And he said, okay, here's the part. So it just, it was all, you know, like it was just meant to happen. It was great. That's perfect. I'm a big believer that everything happens for a reason. And that yeah. was one of them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. And so prior to Whopper, you were even a singer and dancer at the Wonderland theme park. That just sounds so exciting. <laughs> <laughs> it might sound more exciting than it truly was, to be honest. <laughs> I was um, I was studying at a place called Theatre Nepean, which doesn't exist anymore, but had amazing people like David Wenham and Joel Edgerton. And um, uh, I was out there and... Uh, the only, you know, our casual jobs, like people would work in cafes and stuff, but I worked at Australia's Wonderland as a suit character. So I would be like, you know, Barney Rubble and people from the Flintstones and, you know, um, and it meant that I only had to, the great thing was you were, you were sort of well paid for two days and then I could just spend the rest of the five days thinking about training as an actor. Um, and it was great. And a lot of those people went on to be, you know, in theatre and musicals and all of that and I still see them. And so it was, it was a great training ground as well. What do you think was like the number one lesson you learnt while you were there? At Wonderland? Um, I think it was about stamina and it was about, um, there was something about particularly being in suits. You know, Wonderland had been going for 20 years or something and there was a really, there was a lazy feeling about it. You know, you, you sort of, it was very easy to, um, when I think about that time, I think about not being on top of my energy. Um, and when you're not, just noticing, I guess, what happens in a company, and we were a company of people, um, I guess I have more understanding of how my energy affects everybody else and um, and how to keep that in check, I guess. Because if you're negative, you're going to make everyone else feel really bad. And, and when people are tired anyway and, you know, the work is demanding and, you know, uh, yeah, I just I remember thinking, yeah, if I did that again, I'd have a different attitude around it, I reckon. And that work must be really demanding, like, do you get really, really hot in those suits? <laughs> yeah, look, you know, and, and, you know, you just, I mean, people just abuse you is the truth, you know, <laughs> like, you just get, you know, you get, but that's fine, like, that was the job, and there's nothing glamorous about it, but that's also, was also great for me to, you know, just do hard work. Bit of a character builder. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Literally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I've also seen that you've performed in... And Anything Goes as well, which is pretty exciting. Was that one of the recent ones or one of the older ones? Uh, I, look, I've been in Anything Goes twice, actually. I was in, I was in it years ago at the production company. Um, the man who was the resident director of The Sound of Music when we finished that was directing it, and so I was I was in it there, just in the ensemble, and uh, I, I, I loved the show. And then I had this sort of whole other career happen in New Zealand. I'm, I'm a, I love New Zealand. And I went over there initially to do Evita years ago and uh, I ended up staying and doing many shows there and then I so then I end up playing the lead in Anything Goes um, in Auckland and uh, that was a joy mainly because um, I'm not really a dancer and that is a dance show and I've always found if I had a choreographer who understood my body then I could dance you know like if I have to go through a thing where I have to do the choreography from whoever did it on Broadway forget it like I just don't look good but when you've got people who actually can create it for you um, it's just a joy because you suddenly go look I, I can do this and I, I was really proud of myself I got, got great reviews as a dancer which I then sent to my Whopper dance teacher and I went finally finally <laughs> to me it's not something I ever wanted to pursue I don't go to dance class I think I think actors and actors in musical theatre particularly are just phenomenal people like the things they have to go through um to keep their skills up and and i just was uninterested in dance so um the idea that i could just sort of do that um and and also i had a just a spectacular kind of big star in new zealand leading lady and we just had the best time it was awesome it's funny with musical theatre, dance is, like, quite important <laughs> I know. and you that's your job <laughs> I know. I guess I've been. I've always been interested in story. Like with that, like stories are what interests me. Full stop. And particular kinds of stories. Like there's no accident that I am drawn to the work of Stephen Sondheim. Like I seem to do that all the time. And it tends to be dark and 
clever and engaging and very confronting um, and doesn't necessarily require a lot of dance. It's just, and that's just my taste, what I'm drawn to. Um, I love going to see Singing in the Rain, but I'm, I, I'd go mental being in it. I'd just go crazy. Yeah. Well, good to know. So we won't see you in Singing in the Rain any, anytime soon. No, unfortunately not, no. And were any of the Anything Goes ones that you were in, was that one of them that had Todd McKenney in it as well? Because I know he was in it recently. Uh, he was in the last production. Um, I wasn't in that one. In fact, I'd sort of become a director by then. I know Todd and I would love, in fact, I, I, I believe I'm directing him in something next year and I really hope it happens because I've known him for years and it's quite wonderful when you know actors as fellow actors and then you get to direct. I think the reason why people like me as a director is because I'm an actor, because the yeah. the actors go, oh, I, get a, I feel really comfortable. He sort of knows what I need to know. Um, and so I, I really hope I get to sort of do this this play with him next year. Yeah. Yeah, he's so talented and such a lovely guy. Like he's he's been on the show several times, and uh, isn't that funny? We have like so many mutual friends already. <laughs> uh, look, it's the world. It's the world of this industry. Of course, we, we you know it's, it's every it's so small but wonderful like that. It feels like such a big industry, but really, when you start talking to people, you're like, oh, you know them too? It is really small. Yeah, absolutely. Now, this is something that put a huge smile on my face when I first heard about it, because it's such a lovely cause. You produced Raise the Roof, which was a performing arts charity concert to aid those affected by the 2004 Boxing Day tsunami, and it ended up raising $80,000 for UNICEF. That's amazing. Wow, you have done your research. Like, these are things that I'd almost forgotten. Isn't that hysterical? And you bring them up and I think, oh, of course, yeah. Yeah, we did. Look, it was it was potentially the start of me um, moving. I've never left acting behind, but it was potentially the start of me shifting my focus a little bit. And um, it happened because I, I had a really great – uh, friend Alistair Thompson who's a producer here in Sydney and he had wanted to produce some stuff with me um, with me acting in it and then the tsunami happened and I remember there was a wonderful well there is a wonderful director Lisa Freshwater who wanted to do something about that and we thought it would be a cabaret night at um, uh, I can't even think this bit cabaret venue in Annandale in fact I ran it for a while now I can't remember side on cafe that's what it was called um, and and we were going to have a little cabaret night there. And then before you know, we had Jeffrey Rush and Kate Blanchett and, and we're like, we can't do it here. So um, we had, we did it at the State Theatre. And, you know, it was just one of the things that just happened at that time. But as a result of that, um, we were then asked by the State Theatre to run the statement. Um, underneath the State Theatre was a bar and they wanted to turn it into a cabaret room. And so uh, Alistair and myself and a, and a really wonderful publicist, Amanda Buckworth, who is you know, doing great guns now, publicising all the big shows. Um, we ran it and that, and we ran it for three years and with the help of City of Sydney Council and um, it, it was really, it was a great time for me, particularly in the cabaret world. We would get to program shows every three weeks and, um, and, and, and Raise the Roof was, was the start of that. And, you know, it also raised a whole bunch of money for UNICEF, which was incredible. Yeah. Is UNICEF a favourite charity of yours? Yeah, look, I've got a few. I've got a few, to be honest. Um, um, yeah, I've got a few, but yes, of course, absolutely, and particularly at a moment like that, which, you know, everyone wanted to do something. You know, the performing arts industry can be um, separate by nature of its competitiveness, but as soon as something happens and people are needed, it just it, it comes together so quickly and always uh, with such passion and energy. And so that was um, that was a great moment. Oh, good. Changing the world. Yeah, <laughs> trying. Congratulations, because $80,000 is a lot to raise. Yeah, yeah, I remember, I remember, you know, from what was going to be a cabaret night at a little cafe, it's not bad. And you've also been a regular artist on Burt Newton's TV program, Good Morning Australia. That is incredible. I am quite jealous there. How is it <laughs> working with uh, Burt Newton? Oh, that man is remarkable. I met him on Sound of Music and I was in awe of him, as you are when you work with Bert Newton. And I remember it was just those, he's such a funny man that 
it was always like if you can make Bert Newton laugh, you just feel so good and he's so ge so generous. And, and I remember wanting to go on his show but not wanting to ask him because I didn't want it to feel like because I was working with him I could get in that way. And so I sent them recordings, I think, from memory, and I didn't ask. I just did it sort of the right way and I know he ended up appreciating that. And so I was on there quite a lot and he was – he was great because when I was in The Sound of Music, everyone was a star. It was John Waters and Lisa McCune and Eileen Hannon and Anne Wood. And, I mean, everyone everyone was like us. Everyone had like letters after their name. They were, you know, all, you know, recognised by the government as being amazing and then me. And so he was always kind of helping me um, just with my profile and everything, which was great. And I was, I think it's sort of, was it was a lovely full circle last year I directed him in a show and uh, it was so wonderful to, to direct him and Patty his wife in a show and um, and just have the joy that that man brings to a room and and given that I respected him so much and sort of held him at, at arm's length because I respected him so much to then be in a room and have him as he told me respect me so much was just kind of beautiful oh my gosh that's so cute <laughs> Hopefully you guys do something else in the future together. It's my intention, absolutely. Now you are an award-winning actor, singer, director, writer, producer, teacher and recording artist. That is so much, like your resume must be huge. <laughs> How do you balance them all? Your time management must be impeccable. Yeah, look, people always ask that of me. Like they, t they have little names for me. They talk about what life is like when I juggle so many things and it's never really – I've always um, been busy. I remember in 1992 going, next year we'll settle down to be a little quieter, and it never has. So um, I figure that that's something that I love and I shouldn't try and resist it, although I have to be really careful that I get some balance in there. Um, I guess uh, I'm lucky and I get interesting projects come to me um, at the moment and um, – I'm in a position where I just can schedule things well. I've also lived like, you know, if you saw my, my room, it's full of musical theatre books and CDs. It's called the Tybury, you know, Tyron's Library, and people, you know, and borrow stuff from it all the time. And um, So when people ask me to direct a show, chances are I've been listening to it since, you know, 1980, you know. So... It's not like the research part of it is not that hard. I mean, there's a whole bunch of shows that if they asked me to start directing this afternoon, I could just walk in and start. Um, so, you know, it's a juggle. It is a juggle, but I like it. I like the juggle. The, the juggle is fun. I've always said, uh, you know, I'll work 80 hours a week as long as it's not in the same job. You know, I, I love shifting about. I'd rather do 80 hours across 10 jobs than 40 in one job. Oh, isn't that interesting? Is there one that you love more than the other? <laughs> uh no, I love them more depending on the balance between them. I think I'm the best version of myself when I teach. I think that's I think that's the the best version of Tyron, the one that I like most, um, the one who's clearest and you know. So I think I think that I mean you know as an actor I have to go through all the actor stuff that has to do with your own kind of ego and vulnerability and fears and all that stuff and. Um, you know, that feels a little, for me, a little limiting. It feels like it's all about me, whereas when I get to direct or teach, it's kind of it's it's kind of about a bigger purpose, which I like. Yeah, you're helping others, imparting wisdom. <laughs> yeah, yeah, although it's interesting because every now and again I've had to go on in my own shows, which is not much fun in, in one way because, you know, it feels a bit awkward. But um, but you you remember how much fun people have when they're not in charge. Yeah, and and that's good to do every now and again as well. Yeah, and as you said, you get to do all little little different jobs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, keeping your life interesting. And you're even directing a few musicals lately, while also being the head of musical theatre at the Australian Institute of Music in Melbourne. That's incredible. Yeah. Good, imparting wisdom again. <laughs> yeah, it's um, it's it's been awesome. I mean, now I'm r sort of running a course, so. I have. I am very passionate about training of actors. Very passionate because I find, well, you know, when you think about who, where do, where do actors, teachers of acting come from, they tend to come from acting, um, and they may not really be teachers, you know. And so 
and while and while they have so much to offer i just i just find running a program where you can pick and choose how to structure that is a great passion for me and um i've been lucky i've worked at the institute of music in sydney for 10 years and now to kind of start it up in melbourne with music theater is it's just really great because it's got all the excitement of a brand new course, but it's got the experience of 10 years of me looking at it and going, why don't we do things like that? Or why don't we do that? you know, change that and see what that result is. So it's been great. And it's good that the students are obviously getting someone that works in the industry right now, not someone that's like worked in it 20 years ago. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think that that's important. And, and all of our staff are industry professionals. Like I think that that is part of, part of what you want. I mean, there's a, there's a cost to it, which means that, as industry professionals, a lot of my staff have to go off and be in Mamma Mia or whatever it is, you know. Um, but, you know, there's also a through line because, you know, I'm there the whole time. And so it's, um, it's, it's going really well. Yeah, and the students are making amazing contacts in the process. Well, exactly. Like when I think, you know, you think about going to study as an actor, it's not just the study, it's it's the contacts you make. Like you end up being cast because someone, you know, like when I was at WAPA, great directors came and, and worked there who then would employ me in the industry, you know, so that's important too. It's definitely about who you know in this industry. Yeah. Look, I, you know, my, my next show, I've got two girls in it who were in my class that I taught last year at NIDA. And so I spent a year with them at NIDA. And so I know them and I know that they're right for this show. And so, you know, that just makes sense. People start recommending people and then it all just works out. Exactly. Yeah. Now, with your singing career, you do also have a couple of CDs out. One of them is titled Sunday in the Park, but the park ends yeah. with an E, just like how your last name is spelled. It's very smart. <laughs> <laughs> Did you write all of the songs off these albums yourself? No, the first album is a, is a the Sunday in the Park one, is a, a kind of compilation of, well, I was, I was going to say music theatre songs, but it's kind of got everything. It's got a Doors song and it's got a Tim Finn song. Um, it was really a collection of songs that came out of doing the play Sunday in the Park with George um, that I did years ago and played George. Um, so they were all related to that play in some way. The second CD, uh, the CD called Compositions, is a CD that I had a whole bunch of very famous um, sort of music theatre composers from Broadway and Australia write, write songs for me based on my older brother's photographs, actually. So I sent them the Sunday in the Park CD uh, with my brother's photos and they had a brief where they picked a photograph and then wrote a song. And so amazing people like Stephen Schwartz who wrote Wicked and, uh, you know, John Bacchino and uh, Craig Carnelia and like the greats and a lot of great Australian writers like Eddie Perfect and people all wrote me songs. And, um, and so that's what that CD is, yeah. Wow. Do you write your own stuff as well? No, I don't. I mean, I, I tend to write, but I, I'm sorry, I don't write music. I write prose and stories and stuff. But um, it's just, look, I'd love to, but at the moment, life's a little full to add that as well. <laughs> just a little, as we said before. Yeah. You've yeah. already got enough on your plate, you know, too much yeah. to chew already. <laughs> I have great admiration for people who can write. And when I work with new new writers on musicals, you know, I just... I just think it's such a it's such a um, challenge to get that right. I have a lot of respect for them. Luckily, you have those people on your side to give you their songs and the ones yeah. they've written, and then you can just be the talent. You just be the voice. That's right. <laughs> I'm happy with that. Well, I think we are too, because you're an amazing singer. <laughs> <laughs> Now, even though you've already achieved so much in your career, Tyron, what else can we expect from you in the future? Yeah, look, funnily enough, and look, no one's asked me that, so this, like, I've never, I haven't really talked about this, but yes, I'm, I'm planning on, on making a CD potentially this year um, called I'm Not That Girl, which is a, a song from Wicked, um, which is a whole bunch of women's songs that I've always wanted to sing. Um, and uh, I've got an amazing, amazing musical director called Isaac Haywood who, um, you know, he is the it guy. He's the musical director of Muriel's Wedding coming up later this year. And he's got a little gap. And we said, look, let's make an album. So, we're, you know, we're going to do that. But but potentially the sort of the the big shift, because I kind of like, you know, I'm a mid-career artist, whatever that means, um, is to kind of – there's some stuff internationally that I'm going to look at doing. Um, and then I'm potentially going to just start to produce my own, my own stuff. 
I say it and I, I kind of almost don't let the words come out because I haven't talk, talked about this very much, but certainly there's a there's a plan of, um, th there's a bunch of theatre that I think is would be interesting to see that isn't being done um, where musical theatre has a point to it. Um, I mean, every musical theatre's got a point to it, but in this kind of Trumpian era, there's some stuff that I think would be good to be heard and um, moving to Melbourne is part of that, is part of that, um, you know, finding the space and the, and the colleagues to create that. So that's my plan. I feel like I feel like I'm in the middle of something and that was part of moving to Melbourne was to go, what is the next 20 years going to look like and how am I going to set that up, um, which is scary, but, you know, um, probably time. Yeah. It's time to always move on eventually, right? Yeah. And to feel a little bit uncomfortable, you know, like to, like life was going so great here in Sydney and um, it was just, yeah, time to shift. And look, even in the shift being down, the fact that I'm, you know, I'm directing an opera in the next couple of months, you know, which I never searched out and, and I've already sort of been seconding on, on um, TV shows as well as a director. Those things are, um, they wouldn't have happened necessarily here in Sydney. It's just happened because I'm, I've shifted my focus a bit and as I've shifted geographically. Yeah. Well, we're very excited to see all the future projects. And do you have any advice, Tyron, for the listeners who might want to follow their dreams of either becoming an actor or singer, director, or just in the entertainment industry in general? People want almost like that question. They want, they want the answer for what they should do. And the slightly frustrating thing about this industry is that there's no ladder. Um, it just doesn't look any particular way. Um, I think you should say yes to everything to begin with. I think you should just be wherever you're asked to be, you know, and just be and, and explore and learn. Um, and just, you know, trust that you're on the right path. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to kind of go, what is the advice for people who are just starting out? I mean, the, the thing that I think everyone needs to do is diversify. No one really, I think there's probably four people who make their living out of musical theatre in Australia. Um, so diversify and, and, and why, why would you not want to anyway? Because there's so many things to do and like to just go, I'm a singer and an actor and a dancer. Um, I go, there's so many more things as well that, that feed that. So for me, it's like you have to diversify, you have to... Um, if I look at the people who I went to Whopper with, um, the people who are still um, working in the theatre do that. They, they do a bit of everything, um, not, not um, because they have to and there's gaps between jobs, because they really want to and there's stuff to learn. Absolutely. Now, before we go, Tyron, if the listeners would like to contact you or find out what you're up to, where should they go? Um, they can go, as I suspect you have, to my hopelessly outdated website, I really try, I really try and keep that thing up to date. Like I really try, but that's, I just, like every day, I don't wake up and go, I must do that website. Like, oh God. Um, but um, that is where I kind of, you know, I should be better because I know in this industry it's important to have something up to date and, you know, all that. And there are so many things that I'm doing that, um, that it's good to have one spot for that. Um, so my website, which is just my name, tyronpark.com, um, I try and keep updated uh, with, with stuff that's going on, particularly now that I'm working across cities in Sydney and Melbourne. Um, so generally through there. And then I I am a big social media person simply because it's just it just works. It's just like, and it's not just like self-promotion, but there's sort of, I find it interesting to hear people's thoughts on things and, you know, and it's related to theatre because that's the world I live in, but um, it's not always about buy a ticket to this, you know. It's good that you're on everything. You need to be these days. Yeah, yeah. Well, I remember it was part of a contract that I had once that I had to be on Instagram. I, oh, no, Twitter. It was the first time I was on Twitter. And I was like, really? But it was part of my contract. So I was like, okay, it's that serious. Like people take it that seriously as a, as an industry tool. That was the first time I've ever heard Twitter in a contract. I know. I wasn't that impressed with it, to be honest, because to be honest, I don't like Twitter that much um, as a writer. And as you can hear, I like to talk and I like to, you know, so I go, oh, they're just so, it's so limiting, just those little characters, you know. But anyway, it has its purpose. Yeah, because it's like uh, 140 characters, isn't it? It's very hard to say what you're yeah. going to say in that tiny That's little box. Say. Yeah, exactly. yeah. 
I'm, a, I'm exactly the same. If I need to say more, it will be multiple tweets. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show today, Tyron. I really appreciate your time. It's it's a pleasure. It's so nice to meet you and, and chat, and um, hopefully we'll uh, some other time as well. Yes. We'd love to have you on again in the future, and, yeah, hopefully it will be face-to-face. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. And good luck with yeah. all the future projects. We're looking forward to it. Excellent. Thanks so much. You're very welcome. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Well, I hope you all enjoyed today's interview. And if you'd like to listen to any of my other interviews, you can check out all the podcasts and videos on our website, raveituptv.com. But for now, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye.